Hey Oliver, welcome to episode four. If you've made it this far, you're not bored yet. Let's see if I can take care of that problem. Uh, in this episode, we're going to build the bottom module, which is gonna have our solar arrays and radiators for temperature control and a fuel tank for monopropellant and liquid oxygen and fuel for repeat missions so that the astronauts can go from the lunar station to the lunar surface and back and refuel without having to come all the way back to planet Kerbin. So I've had to speed up the assembly footage greatly because this video would be like 50 minutes long if I didn't. So I had to go through a little bit of trial and error while I was building this one. Here I'm putting the radiators on. I've assembled the arms and put on the solar panels. And the problem with the hinges is that when you turn on the engines, those arms are gonna wobble and smash into the tank and possibly cause problems. So what I'm gonna end up having to do here is to put docking ports on so that when they're folded into their collapsed position, they will be stable and not bounce around. So it took me a few minutes to design these and it's a little bit tedious. And then of course you have to go into your uh, macro shortcuts to program it to operate at the push of a button. Here we're assembling the actual docking ports themselves and then orienting, orienting them so that they will line up properly and then programming the hinge so that it has limited movement. We want it to stop when it hits the docking ports and then when they open up, we want it to be completely perpendicular or horizontal. So here we just launch it to test it. And I had to mess with the, uh, with the action group here. And we'll go ahead and test it again. Of course, under gravity, they don't have enough strength to go out, but the test was successful. Yeah, we'll put a quick fairing on there and we will build the second stage next. And as per usual, we want to build the second stage so that when we arrive at the station for docking we can deorbit the second stage as always we don't want to leave junk in space we don't want to litter so here i'm putting a command computer on there so that i have control of that stage once it's undocked from the primary satellite we're sending up and so we are going for a total of like always about you need about 3,000 to 3,300 to get to a stable orbit, and then we need about 200 meters a second or so of maneuvering capability to get ourselves in proximity with the existing space station so that we can dock up. And then, of course, we need a little bit of fuel left over to deorbit the second stage so we don't leave the space junk up. And I almost forgot the uh, communication antennas. It's always good to put more than one just in case one of the antennas malfunctions, you have a redundancy system. And there we, we deorbited the from the last mission. And we're lining up the space station with our launch pad. Using the same technique as we did last time, we want the space station to get a little bit out ahead of us so that we can do a quick maneuver node and do one orbit while lining up for the rendezvous with the space station so that we don't have to do multiple orbits and some ridiculous things and this is a little bit heavier of a rocket so it tends to be a little bit harder to control on the way up and then you'll see as we get low on fuel the gimbals of the engines start to create a lot of wobbling and and problems like that so i actually had to reduce the gimbal effect so that it didn't get it too out of control you see it starts to to wobble there that's because the gimbal setting is too high so there I turned them down real quick and 
Now we're going to coast on up out of the atmosphere so we can get rid of our fairing. And then like always we coast up to our apoapsis to conduct our final prograde burn to get us into a stable orbit, semi-circular. Now we're going to create our maneuver node and manipulate it so that we get an encounter with our space station. There we go. Then we click our maneuver node to finalize our orientation and then we're going to fast forward up into the location where we have to burn. Since we're increasing our, our altitude, we need to burn prograde. And we do it ever so gently so that we don't overdo it. And it looks like we're going to have a good encounter, so we're going to speed up. There we go. Now we're going to click the screen so it highlights the target and our velocity relative to the target. We're going to orient our ship retrograde and conduct a burn to so we can nullify or zero out our relative velocity to each other and once we've accomplished that we're going to face the target and give us ourselves a gentle burn it's about two kilometers away so 17 meters a second works now we're going to get rid of our second stage and deorbit it and then switch back to our final module here as we approach the space station, we're going to once again turn around retrograde to slow our approach. We're going to have to burn a little bit. We're going to do it gently with the shift key. We'll just kind of work our way to a fairly close proximity and then uh, we're going to extend our solar panel arrays. And we're pretty much nullified to, or I'm going to get it, I'm going to fast forward us here to the sunlight so we can see what's going on a little bit better. We're pretty much, I mean, 2.7 meters a second isn't much, so we can still point at the, sh at the uh, space station and, and burn a little bit. Now I'm using the RCS thrusters to move the prograde marker on our, grav on our nav ball so that it's directly facing the bullseye of the magenta of the target so that we're traveling directly at it. The prograde marker represents the direction we're facing. And then the V-shaped line represents the, the direction that we're facing and the prograde marker represents the direction that we're going. So that's two different things. See that V-shaped with a dot? We're gonna line that up. Oops, we're switching over to reorient the space station for docking. And as always, we're gonna, we're gonna line up so we're facing the target and then we're going to use our, our RCS thrusters to control our approach so that we're headed directly on target. And now we're getting ready to conduct our lunar transfer burn. So we're gonna have to store our solar arrays so they don't wobble and break off into space. Like always, we're going to set up a maneuver node at about 90 degrees to where the moon is so that as we approach our apoapsis, the moon will travel to that location. As we travel to that location, we'll meet at the same time. So we need to do a 817 meter second burn it's a 34 second burn if we go at full power, but I'm going to go at 50% power. And as it approaches the, the end, we want to slow down our thrust. We want very small corrections so we don't overdo it. You don't have to create a maneuver node here. It's just good to see how much delta V it's going to take to circularize your orbit.
And you can see that we used up about 40% of our fuel, about 40 or 50 after this burn, it might be 50% of our fuel to get out to the moon. So we'll have to send out a, another mission to refuel that tank so that we can use that tank to refuel our landing, our landing ship on multiple occasions as we're going to be ferrying astronauts to and from the lunar surface to the space station. We want extra fuel. And so now you can see we've got this wonky inclination to our orbit. Since we weren't in a perfect equatorial orbit when we left for the moon, it put us into a wonky orbit here. So what I'm going to do is we're going to face normal and we're going to burn upwards to change our inclination and, and create an equatorial orbit around the moon. So right now we're facing up. Now you can see that we need to correct it again. So we want to bring that teal marker down to the lunar path. So now we're going to have to face down and conduct a burn down to change our inclination. So that our apoapsis goes down and our periapsis goes up. And we want to make it parallel to that white line. There we go. Now we're in a pretty circular orbit with a very equatorial inclination. And our space station is now ready to be in service. We were, like I said, we are going to have to fill up that fuel tank though for our landing craft. So we'll go ahead and deploy the uh, solar arrays and the radiators and our Kerbals will be happy and healthy in their new home while they wait for the landing craft to come rendezvous and pick them up and bring them down to the lunar surface. And you can see that they're happy in their little habitat there. And we'll look forward to looking or to watching episode five.